Hey guys, thanks for joining in with me for another acrylic paint pour. One of my favorite parts of acrylic pouring art is cells. Even though I know there's a science behind it, I can't help but be impressed by the magic of it happening. With a little bit of help from a silicone based cell activator, you can create your very own vibrant abstract pour painting. I've been experimenting with acrylic paint pouring for around six years now. I've tried out many different pouring mediums in this time. It can be a bit overwhelming to start with. For beginners, I always recommend getting Floetrol as a starting point. Though it's gone up a bit in price in my area, like everything else, it's still the cheapest option for me. Since I do so many paintings, cheap is good. While I don't dislike other pouring mediums, I find I have the best results using Floetrol. Today I have my paints and micas mixed with a combination of Floetrol and water. I've noticed the bottles I've been getting lately have been a bit thicker than what I'm used to. So I just add a bit of water to get the consistency that I'm going for. In each of the cups, I measured out four ounces of Floetrol and one ounce of water. Paints can be a bit trickier to weigh out. Each pigment has its own weight and different brands use different binders. This means that two paints that are weighed out may not actually have the same amount of paint in them. At this point, I'm pretty good at eyeballing the amount that I'll need. The most important part is making sure that all of your colors end up being the same consistency. You can test them out with a drip test if you can't tell by sight. To do a drip test, take a sheet of plastic or paper and drop dots of paint across the top of the sheet. Try to make sure each dot is similar in size and that they're separated from each other slightly. Once all of your colors are on, lift the edge where the paints are and hold it up vertically. Watch the paints as they begin to slide down. Are they all moving at the same rate? If so, excellent. That means that they're ready to go. If you have some that are slower than others, add a bit more water or pouring medium to the mix and test again. Have some that are running way faster than the others? Try adding a bit more paint to the mix before testing once more. I did things slightly different this time while mixing in my mica powders. Typically, I'll mix them with a bit of extra pouring medium to make sure they don't clump up when added to the complete mix. If you add the powder into a huge mix of pouring medium and paint, you're most likely going to run into clumps. Today I tried out adding some flow aid to the micas instead. Flow aid is kind of like a pouring medium without the added acrylic resins. It's used to thin paints and it can also affect the transparency of a pigment. I mixed it up to bottle specifications and then added a couple of mini droppers full to each batch of mica that was mixed. Once that mix is smooth and clump free, I add it to the already mixed paints and pouring medium. Whatever method you use, I really recommend not skipping this step unless you're just going for wads of mica on your canvas. The only color that has silicone added in for this pour is the cell activator. I'm using a Mars Black with two drops of silicone oil added in. I mix my cell activator exactly like any of the other paints I'm using. The only difference is the added silicone. You can use this mix a variety of different ways, but my go-to is always the swipe method. I have a wide selection of palette knives to choose from, but you can use anything to pull the paints across one another. I've used paper towels, plastic sheets, spackling spatulas, credit cards, and more to swipe with. Get creative with it and see what results you get with different objects. Remember, if a pour doesn't turn out exactly how you pictured it, you can always paint over it. Just make sure to give that canvas time to dry and cure or you risk reactivating the paint on the canvas, which can be messy. Okay guys, now that I've covered all the basics for this pour, I'm going to leave you to the rest of the magic. 
If you'd like to learn more about silicone oil, I have a series exploring the effects of different viscosities in acrylic pouring linked in the description below. I'll also leave a list of the colors and micas that I have mixed up down there as well for those of you who are interested. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video. I'll see you next time. Bye.